Hi, thank you for watching this video. My name is Alex and most probably like you, I'm really passionate about the Internet of Things. Uh, together with my team, we've developed during the last two years a um, small piece of software called Wildin Studio. Hopefully this software will make your life easier when you're building your Internet of Things project. So if you're a hobbyist, if you're a person that wants to learn about the Internet of Things, or you're a person that just needs to do a really fast prototype in the Internet of Things, hopefully Wildodin Studio will make your life easier. We've been working on Wildodin Studio for about two years. Uh, we think Wildodin Studio is kind of ready to be released into the wild, and we decided to make a series of videos where you can show you how to use Wildodin Studio. This is the first video in the series, and today I'm going to show you Wild in Studio, its two versions, and some really small projects with the Raspberry Pi and the Adafruit Clue boards that I have in front of me. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it and let me show you Wild in Studio. Um, hopefully, you can see my desktop and you can see me as well down in the corner. To get started with Wildodin Studio, all that you need is a browser. So to get to Wildodin Studio, just type wildodin.studio in the address bar and click on enter and you should get to our website. Wildodin Studio comes in two flavors. One is a desktop application that you can download for Windows, Linux and Mac OS and you can use it on your computer without the need of connecting it to the internet. And the second one is a version that runs in the browser. For this version, you don't need to download anything. You can just, you can just use it in your favorite browser. As I said before, Wildodin Studio is an open source software. So if you would like some more details about it, or you would like to contribute to it, or you found out some bugs, um, you can visit our GitHub website, which is this one. You can report issues, you can send us some new um, code that you would like to add to Wildodin Studio, or you can read some documentation over here. Okay, so let's start with the browser version, as this does not require you to install anything on your computer. I will just click this button over here, and a new web page will open. If you want to access this directly, just go to web.wildodin.studio, and this web page will show up. As this is the first time that I'm using Wildodin Studio, it will tell me welcome and it will offer me two options. Create a new application, basically start a new project or connect the board. Of course, um, in order to improve Wildodin Studio, we do collect some anonymous statistics. This means um, information about how users or how you are using Wildodin Studio. We don't know your name, we don't know your email address, we know nothing about you. This information really helps us improve Wildodin Studio and better understand how you, the users of Wildodin Studio, benefit from it. If you do not like to participate into this, just make sure you uncheck this checkbox here and we'll never collect any data from you any anymore. Okay, because we just migrated out of beta Wildodin Studio, um, I will be presented with a question telling me that, hey, if you had any projects in the beta version, make sure you export them and import them back into the production version. Um, as I never had any beta projects, I will hit no. Okay, so this is Wildodin Studio's interface. As you can see, we have a flag here. This will allow you to choose your language. Um, we have Wildodin Studio in English, in Spanish, in French, in Hungarian, and several other languages. These are the languages that our team knew. But if you would like to see Wildodin Studio in your own language, um, you can easily send us a translation and contribute to Wildodin Studio. We will be very, very happy to accept it. As you can see, if I hit Spanish, it will be in Spanish. If I hit German, it will be in German. But I will go back to English because that is um, something that everybody understands. Next, we have the projects library. The projects library is the place where you can store all your projects and all your IoT applications. There's one thing worth mentioning about Wildodin Studio web version. We do not store these projects on our server or in the cloud. We just use the browser to present you Wildodin Studio, but everything that you do in Wildodin Studio is stored locally in your browser. So if you reinstall your browser or erase your browser, that information will be gone. So Wildodin Studio is a web project here, but it's not actually using any cloud storage. So everything that you do will be stored on your computer. For the project, you have two options, create a new application, and you have just have to select the language and give it a name. 
or you can import an application that you have previously done in the offline version or in another browser. Next to the project li projects library, we have a burger menu. This, this shows you some advanced options of Wired in Studio. One worth mentioning is the documentation. This will take you to a website where you can see how to get started, how to connect your boards, and for instance, how to send the translation. The last item in the burger menu is the about window. Here you can see the name of our team members that have created Wired in Studio, and you have the same checkbox about the data collection. So you can change your mind about data collection anytime, just go to the about box and check it or uncheck it. Next, we have the connect button. As this is the internet of things that we are talking about, you will have to deal with boards. And connecting a board while in studio is done by clicking this connect button. You have here several options. You can connect the device through the web. This means you can connect a device that is remotely located. You can use a MicroPython device, which is on the serial port, or we have a Raspberry Pi simulator. In time, this list will grow and we will add several options. If you're a first time user, we strongly suggest to you that you click set up a device. This will take you to the documentation and will take you step by step into configuring and setting up a device. Don't worry about this. We'll have some videos later on about how to connect each of these devices and about all the quirks about these devices. Okay, next to this, we have an application tab. This is where you will see your project and the code of your project. We have a dashboard tab where you can create graphs. We have a notebook tab where you can create some documentation and the shell tab, which allows you to directly access the board if the board allows it. This is more or less while in Studio, the web version. Now let's see the offline version. First of all, we need to download the offline version. This means selecting your operating system. You can choose Windows, Linux or Mac OS. If you just simply connect, click the button here, the browser should be able to detect your operating system and download Wired in Studio for you. Um, this is, might be a rather large download, it's about 100 megabytes. As I have already previously downloaded this, I will just um, start my own version. I will double click it, and as you can see, it will start as a normal desktop application. The first time you start Wired in Studio, you will say the same about box and it will tell you welcome to Wired in Studio, allow you to create a new project or connect the board. And of course, you have the same checkbox about collecting data. I will just hit exit. As you can see, this is a normal desktop application. It does not make use of any browser that you have and shows up as a normal icon in your taskbar. As you can see, the, uh, the interface is more or less the same. You have the language chooser, you have the projects library, and of course you have the burger menu that allows you to select some additional options. And of course the connect button. As you can see, as this is an offline version, it does make use of all the resources that you have on your computer. And as you can see, you have uh, some additional options that are not available in the browser version. We will discuss them in detail in a further video. One thing that is worth mentioning is the projects library. As this is a normal um, desktop application, the projects library is just a normal folder on your hard drive. So it's not stored inside Wired in Studio using some crazy and obscure methods. It's just a normal folder on your computer. Of course, you can create a new application or you can import an application, for instance, that you have done in the browser. Now that you have seen um, both versions of Wired in Studio, let me give you an idea of what you can do with Wired in Studio. For this, I have two boards here, a Raspberry Pi and an Adafruit Clue board. The Raspberry Pi is running Raspbian, the Raspbian operating system, which is basically Linux, while the Adafruit Clue board is running CircuitPython, a Python version designed by Adafruit. Uh, I have previously made all the settings necessary to connect the boards, so I will just connect the boards and run some examples. Don't worry if you don't know how to connect them, I will have a further video uh, where I will show you how to do all the steps. So, let's connect the boards. First, let's connect the Raspberry Pi and let's connect the MicroPython one. Here we go. Okay, so both, both boards are plugged in into power and they start connecting. Let's see what happens in Wired in Studio. Um, hopefully you can see my screen and still can see me in the corner. If I hit connect, 
um, because the MicroPython board, the Adafruit Clue, connects really, really fast, I will just use it first. So because it's a MicroPython board or a circuit Python board, I will click on it, I will select the serial port, and in the browser it's only one available, and I will hit connect. The browser will show me a list, and I will say Clue. Once this connects, I can see the console, where I can write Python commands like print hello, here we go. Sorry, and I can see I have an Adafruit Clue board. Okay, so let me import the project that I have previously done. Uh, I think it's called number. I have just imported a zip file, and you can see it's a simple Python program. It will just increment a value and send the sensor value, a simulated sensor value. The project comes with a dashboard which has a line and a gauge, an empty notebook, and we have a shell which is the MicroPython shell. So let's start it. As you can see, the project starts on the board, it says sending sensor values, and on the dashboard we can see it already starts um, sending sensor values. Okay, so this would be the Adafruit board. Let's see if we have our Raspberry Pi. Yes, our Raspberry Pi has showed up. Uh, the Raspberry Pi connects a little bit slower, as it has an operating system that it needs to boot. A really important thing is the Raspberry Pi is connected via Wi-Fi and via a uh, server. So even though my Raspberry Pi is right in front of me, it could be in any location in this world as long as it has internet access. So I will connect to the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, the shell is a little bit different and it does sh show me a Linux shell. And I can run Linux applications here. And um, because my application was written in Python, I can run the exact same application on the Raspberry Pi. And I will hit run. And as you can see, it starts sending sensor values. Um, yeah, this is it. This is how you can create an application and connect the board and um, run something on it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll have several other videos on how to connect the Raspberry Pi, how to connect the MicroPython board, how to use the offline version, how to use the web version, how to build the dashboards, and how to build really interesting applications. If you would like to get notified when we post a new video, just make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll be waiting any questions in the comments. Bye bye!